All right, so the sixth type of profit maximizer are line extensions. And with line extensions, we're basically saying, okay, what do our people want? We've got the products and the services that we offer, but what else do they want, right? So you think about, you know, a tooth paste company, you know, there's 15 billion different types of toothpaste, but you know, what about dental floss and what about mouthwash and what about, and it used to be that if you sold the toothpaste companies, they didn't have their own dental floss. They didn't have their own mouthwash. Well, now they all do because they wisely said, we're not in the toothpaste business. We are in the teeth business. If, if you got teeth, then we want to do the whole thing. We want to get, we want to take care of everything. I would argue, as a matter of fact, that Colgate should open up a line of dental clinics. You know, I mean, if there's tons of dental clinics out there, if there were one offered by, you know, Colgate, that's a brand that I know and trust. Sure, I'll go and have Col a Colgate dentist clean my teeth. So think, what are all the things? They, they know you, they like you, they trust you. They want you to be a one-stop shop. What are all the other things that you can deliver? A great example of this is back uh, to, to, our, to our friends at the, at the filter company. When we first started working with them, they sold filters. That's it. They sold these things right here. These are string wound filters. There's a inner housing that is made out of some type of, of plastic or vinyl, and it's wrapped with some type of string, either a cotton again or a you know, vinyl of some sort. And when these are done, they get put into these types of housing. So we made and sold these, all right? We made and sold these, these types of filters. But our clients and our, our customers, they were using them to put them in these, and occasionally, they would call us and they would say, hey, I know that you guys sell these, but do you also sell these? And we would say, no, because we're a filter company, right? That was our response. Nope, we're a filter company. So we started working with them. I said, why, don't, why aren't we selling the housings that they go into? Well, because we're a filter company. We don't sell housings. But why can't we sell the housings? That's what our customer, well, we, we don't make those. We're a filter company. And the, the point that I had to make was, no, we are not. We are not a filter company. We cannot allow our product to define who, you know, to define what our business is. Products do not define businesses. Markets define businesses. That's why the companies that exist and that last for, you know, years and years and decades and generations, they are the companies that advocate for markets. You think about a big brand like Chanel. Okay, think about like a Chanel. If you go back and you look at, at a Chanel dress in the 1950s and 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s, they're going to look different from decade to decade to decade. They didn't say, oh, this is the type of dress that we make, period, end of story. No. Chanel advocates for a particular type of woman, and Chanel's job is to give that woman what she wants, whatever she wants. Apple does the same type of thing. Apple is not a computer company. Advocate, Apple advocates for a particular type of person. They advocate for a particular type of person. Now, this particular type of person used to like this particular type of computer, so they built that person a phone, and then they built them a tablet, and then they built them a watch. And again, down the road, they're probably going to be building them houses and cars and who knows what, because they're not in the computer business. Right? They're in the business of advocating for a particular type of person and giving them what they want. That is what great companies do. That is what great brands do. Weaker companies say, nope, this is what we have. This is what we make. This is what we sell. And that's, that's the business that we're in. And those are the companies that like, like the guy that invented the piano key tie. Right? Compare the guy that invented the piano key tie to Chanel. Right? Those are the one-hit wonders. Those are the companies that are there and they're successful and then they're not and they never know what happened. What happened is the tastes of their market changed. And that's why you must always be asking yourself. And so with this particular type of profit maximizer, that's what we're asking ourselves. What do they want that we're not currently offering? In the case of this business, they wanted housings, but we weren't offering them. They wanted us to be their one-stop shop. They wanted us to be their provider. And we were saying, no, 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 you get your filters from us, but go somewhere else to, to, to get you know, your housings. And the reason was, is that the margin on the housings just wasn't good enough, you know, because we didn't manufacture these. We had to wholesale them. You know, the margins, they were just way too low. Well, the point that we made to the CEO of this company is 
the margin is irrelevant because the cost of acquisition has already been incurred by the filter. That's what we're, the point that we're making. The other nice thing is that these are functionally slack adjusters. These filters, these filters sell for, you know, two to 10 bucks each. These are 1500 each. They're dramatically more expensive. You don't have to sell a lot of these. And even if the margins are tight, it makes up for a whole lot of filters. Okay. So the lesson at the end of the day is it doesn't have to be your product. Okay. In the beginning, it doesn't have to be your product. If you have to wholesale it, if you have to license it, if you have to be an affiliate for someone else, right? Figure out what your market wants. Don't define your business. Don't define your offers based on the products that you currently sell. Become a solutions provider. Okay. Become a solutions provider and give your market what they want. Be their one-stop shop and you're going to be around for a whole lot longer. And you're also going to make a whole lot more profit in the process. All right. I'll see you in the next video.